If you watched any of my previous videos with my mini quad, you'll know now that it's dead. I crashed it for um, a second time and got a bit fed up with the frame breaking and destroying some of the motors. So this video is just to describe what I did next. I decided to do it as a sort of a, a talking video, else I'd have uh, loads and loads of captions and you'd spend most of the time reading rather than looking at what actually happened. So here was the state of the uh, the previous mini quad. Basically I ripped all the electronics off um, and then I decided I was going to rebuild it from scratch using uh, basically bits of wood. Now from building my tricopter which I used the RC Explorer.se or the David Vinistil plans, I had loads of uh, wood left. This is uh, the amount I used to buy because I used to crash it every time and I just made legs and legs and legs so I had a bunch of spares but if you were to buy this it would cost about two pounds from B&Q or probably the same whatever your country's equivalent is. One of the things I decided to do differently on this one is try and take away the compromises I had to do with keeping the quad very small last time one of which was buying these uh, very small 850 or 950 milliamp batteries uh, which would last about four minutes but after a couple of minutes or any serious throttle work would, would beep away as the voltage would sag into the sort of alarm zone on the KK2. So I got a, I had a bunch of these um, these 1.6 uh, LiPos, two cells still, and I thought I'd, I'd like to try and use those even though they're a little bit heavier but that, that was the, the target I was looking at. The other thing I wanted to do is use a standard uh, immersion VTX and not one of these little mini ones that A, I didn't have the internal receipt for on my fat sharks um, and B, would, aren't very well filtered so I had problems with lines on the video. So I got my um, bits of wood together and, and pretty much laid out how I thought it should go. I'm not using any uh, any maths or any real design here, I'm just looking at it and say well that looks about right so that's what I went with. I, I decided to try and use some of the things that um, David Renato used all the techniques he used in his tricopter build, uh, which was zip ties as he calls them, and um, lots of very basic things like that. Um, so firstly I just drilled out a couple of holes, obviously I tidied this up so the motors wouldn't rub. Uh, as these were much smaller motors and I couldn't thread the, the cable tie through them, I then cut a couple of notches in the bottom for the cable ties to, to go into so they wouldn't move. Um, and then mounted the motor on that way and they're pretty secure and they don't move around. Um, after that point I decided where the electronics were probably going to go and I came up with another couple of bits of wood that I'd kind of build little shells with and put things on there. Um, after a couple of days I, I got the nuts and bolts I needed um, and I realised I had to cut a couple of notches in some wood just to pass the wires through. Um, but the, the basic shape was there and it, it seemed okay. It didn't seem too heavy. Obviously a lot heavier than the original uh, weak frame but I still thought it would hopefully be okay. Um, next thing, moved on to electronics. Um, one of the problems I had, as mentioned before, was that if a leg snapped because the motors and the ESCs were soldered into the arms, the motors were getting the uh, wires ripped off and basically the motors were destroyed. So a uh, shock to many but I put small bullets on so the idea being that if a leg broke the bullet would come away instead of the motor breaking which is a lot cheaper and easier to fix. Um, I also taken another leaf out of the tricopter build decided not to have a power distribution board and instead made up um, a big cable like this basically bringing all the electronics or all the electric current I needed uh, into one big lob of a wire and then shoving it all into an XT60 as I did here which went reasonably neatly. After that it was a case of trying to get the electronics to fit in. Um, retrospect and, and maybe I'll go back and do this it would be much easier if the ESCs laid long ways um, as they are here they're sort of kind of slightly overlapping and at funny angles and I had to well I couldn't get the exact lengths I wanted because where the motors had been sort of knackered before um, the wires there were all a bit frayed and, and not much to work with. Uh, but it all looked okay once the top went on, sort of out of sight, out of mind is what I went with. Um, so that's how it looked after I got most electronics installed there. 
Um, what I needed to do though is do something with the little 808. Um, so what I did, I built up a little camera platform using these little bits of rubber hose and some Velcro and epoxied that in. The idea is that was hopefully going to take away any vibrations from the frame. Um, and there it is. That's what I eventually came up with. Uh, you'll notice that there's a horrible linear polarised antenna in the back of the VTX. I found out I didn't have any um, any right angled connectors or or any antennas that were right angled so uh, one of those is on order. And so in the meantime I got on with mating in it. So the first thing I did was just do a bit of an indoor hover. Um, I knew it would be reasonably okay or so I thought so it's just in auto stabilize here on the KK2 and it seemed to hover quite happily and quite stably. Um, as expected, the extra weight did mean it was slightly over 50% to get it into hover. Um, so obviously I wanted to, to do a bit more here to see um, when, when going for a, a, a longer fly or in the air a longer amount of time, I needed to make sure that the ESCs or the motors weren't overheating or anything. So that meant going off to the field. So for the Maiden, I literally had um, about four minutes to fly, um, but by happy coincidence, Richard had come down to do a bit of tuning on his tricopter and was able to provide me with these external shots just of uh, this takeoff, a quick flyby and a landing. But uh, let's flick over to the FPV footage. So here's the uh, same takeoff from FPV. Um, which is about the second takeoff I did, I think, and uh, it's pretty good. the 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 look from the camera is fine. The, it's an 808, so it doesn't handle the light very well, but the speed seems fine and it handles okay. The only thing I was picking up is that we were getting a bit of wobble from the motors. I don't believe this is a sort of vibration on the camera thing. I think this is very much the motors are having a bit of a a squabble about uh, trying to hold the attitude correctly. So it just says to me I need to, to go and retune that. During the flight I had a battery disconnect from my fat shark so I couldn't see anything. So I put it into auto stabilize and uh, let it come down, which it did with a little bounce. But uh, the, the stability of the frame and the strength looked pretty good so at this point just took off again and it was uh, absolutely unscathed. Uh, the only thing I'll be doing is changing that battery. So this brings us up to today where I went out again, had a bit of a mess around with the KK settings and tried to dial down the pitch roll gains thinking it would help. Um, if anything it's actually gone a bit wobblier, as you see here um, we still at the wobble and we seem to have a little bit of vibration transfer as well, uh, which is not ideal. However I still persevered on, um, I checked the manoeuvrability by trying to chase a seagull uh, and it, it felt pretty good despite the wobbles. Uh, obviously the seagull one, but he is a bird, so you'd expect him to do so. Now you can't put any FPV in a field with goalposts without flying through some goalposts, so I did exactly that, and uh, it was a lot of fun, <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> I can't imagine why. We'll have to make some sort of game out of this at some point, all racing through goalposts, a couple of us. Um, and the plus side, um, it let me test the robustness of the frame once again when I decided to almost hit the goalpost and then just spin around and uh, have a bit of a, a wonky landing but I just powered on and took straight off again absolutely no damage whatsoever again so I'm really liking the frame took it on a little bit of aerobatics just uh, light ones, I didn't want to push it because it is still wobbly just a flip here and uh, a quick loop there uh, and it's all, it's all okay um, I took it right to the end of the field, which you'd expect an Immersion 600 to do, although we've got a polarity mismatch. Um, I certainly wouldn't have taken the previous incarnation of the Mini Quad out that far. So I'm pretty happy with the fact it flies and the fact it still is pretty manoeuvrable and everything seems okay. I'm getting about seven minutes of flight time before I start getting the beeps from the Leiper. I'm sure that could be pushed more, but seven minutes is 
Sounds like a lifetime more than four. Obviously what I really need to do is sort out these wobbles and the vibration. Um, I'm desperate to go and fly and have some fun with it, but I really want to get this a bit smoother. As soon as I get it smooth, I'll be uh, very happy indeed. But um, stay tuned, as I guess I'll be messing around and uh, trying to get this as good as I can. <laughs> 